Hello and a warm welcome to News Click. I'm your host, Neelu Vyas, and this week on Point of View, we talk about Battleground Manipur. The 60 member assembly goes to polls in two phases on Feb 28th and March 5th. It's a high stakes battle in this northeastern state with BJP ruling for the last five years. Question being, can it return to power for the second straight term? For Congress, which has formed an alliance called Progressive Secular Alliance of six parties, including the left, it's a do or die battle. In 2017, Congress emerged as the single largest party but could not form the government. There were a string of desertions and Congress was left high and dry. Which way will the voters swing? What are the issues resonating this year? What about the divide between the hills and the valleys? All this and much more on the panel discussion. Joining me today is uh, Congress leader Ningam Bam Bupenda Meti. Uh, welcome, uh, Ningam Bam, on uh, News Click. And also joining on the panel discussion is Paujel Chauba, who's the executive editor of the Frontier Manipur. Uh, I welcome you also on the program. I would like to begin the discussion today with uh, Bupenda because a uh, lot of questions are being asked whether how comfortable Congress really is in this election. Because the last time your party emerged as the single largest party, but still you couldn't form the government. So how prepared are you? Can Are you in a position to say that Congress is better prepared this time as compared to uh, uh, in 2017? Yes, we are far better prepared this time because uh, if you compare between the Congress and BJP, if BJP is voted back to power, then armed forces special power is going to remain in Manipur. But if Congress comes back, which we are extremely mm -hmm. hoping for, then armed forces special power mm -hmm. will be lifted up, will be removed entirely from the state of Manipur. You see, nowhere in our country ever, any of our Congress prime minister did ever say that they will give two crores of job every year to the youths, and it did not happen. But mm. in case of our own prime minister, Sri Narendra Modi, what is happening? He has already promised two crores of job to the youths every year. There is no job. Mm. Similarly, here in Manipur, the Chief Minister of Manipur, BJP Chief Minister of Manipur has promised 1.5 lakhs of employment every year. So in the whole of five years, they are supposed to give 7.5 lakhs of employment, but there is no employment at all. Even Manipur civil services exam was never conducted in the five years of BJP's misrule in Manipur. That is why Congress is calling, this is the thing, but not only the Congress, the people of Manipur are calling this era as the darkness. No, but Bupenda, are, are you trying to tell me that if BJP has not done it, then has Congress provided a concrete roadmap to the people? Are you confident that if whatever you are projecting before the people, the people of Manipur are going to vote for Congress? Yes. See, when Prime Minister came, Prime Minister came a few days ago, Home Minister was also here, Defence Minister was here, Finance Minister was here. All the ministers were here, except the cabinet foreign minister was not here, except him. Now, what is happening? Uh, see, when Priyanka Ji came here, what did she say? She was talking about 33% of women reservation in all the government position, government jobs in our state. We mm -hmm. are also putting that in our own manifesto. If you are talking about the youths, those who are yet to get the jobs, those who are yet to get placement in the government sectors, and for those who are yet to get, meaning the unemployed youth, we will give them the allowance to the unemployed youth. And even we are setting, we are going to set up staff selection commission to recruit group C and D services. So this mm -hmm. is happening for the first time. Now, for women, for farmers to increase their productivity from single croppers to double croppers, even to triple croppers in a year, we are also going to update the irrigational facilities in our state. Not only that, the emotive issues of the protection for our entire indigenous population of our state. And for, there, are, there are so many other issues which, which are right. hampering the development of our state. There has been no inclusive development in the state so far. Once the Congress comes back, mind you, this time, see what happens. The people of Manipur gave, verdict, gave its mandate to the Congress in 2017. Somehow they mis abused, abused Ras Bhavan. That's how the government was formed. At the end, the Supreme Court has to strike, has to strike down one minister, strip the ministerial power from one fellow, and he got disqualified right. later. That is why now no. 
Indeed, I mean the the entire world saw the entire world saw how the government no the entire world saw how the government was formed in Manipur. But I want to come to Chauba now. That uh, what is the general uh, perception in Manipur? Because uh, with whomever I have been talking, they are saying that somehow uh, you know uh, BJP will form the they are comfortably placed in Manipur. So uh, what? Uh, Ningam Bam is saying that no people will vote for Congress. Uh, how, which way do you see the wind blowing in Manipur? Uh, that is <coughs> some speculation that I think every political party will have on how many numbers they will have. In Manipur, mm -hmm. as you had pointed out, in the last 2017 elections, Congress got 28 and the BJP got 21. So this time, when even the MPP uh, uh, Congress president has joined the BJP bandwagon. And of course, there are many others who have also joined, shifted over to the uh, BJP. Right. Now, they are filling all 60 assembly constituencies and uh, our political scenario is, is in such a way that we also go to where the wind blows from the center. So if someone's mm -hmm. holding power in the center, Manipur definitely follows suit. So when BJP is there, in Manipur, there was no BJP government, but in 2017, they came. Now, this time, they are, as you have said, very well and comfortably placed and with some hidden uh, alliances, which might be there after the poll, because BJP was not going to get the ma uh, magic number. It will be a hung assembly. But, of course, they will be coming out with numbers, which will be more than like we are speculating around 2021, so with some, or, or perhaps more, but around these areas. So I think they'll more, more or less be comfortable in like uh, going into an alliance with some other smaller party like this time only. But Paujal, another factor which has been really a hallmark of uh, Manipur politics is the instability, the political volatility which we see because of so many desertions happening, people not sticking to their party, then uh, mm -hmm. ultimately people taking oath that, okay, they will not leave the party. How potential is that factor in this election? And will it really resonate amongst uh, uh, the, the, the electorate of Manipur? See, I feel that uh, we have yet to grasp what quality politics is in Manipur. It's just like what we see more money and muscle power flowing around and uh, the electorate also has a very uh, poor sense of judgment when it comes to selecting the right candidate, but rather it all goes on money and uh, muscle power or whatever, I mean like uh, very unfair means. So if we have quality politicians, then of course, these are the people who are not very well off, who don't have very good, uh, who doesn't have very deep pockets. So the person who comes to the forefront in our Manipur elections are the ones who are like, uh, you know, contractors, uh, tekadas, and uh, this some sort of people who have got wealthy from very ill means, unjustified means, and a lot of uh, black money. So we can at least place the question on is there really quality politics in Manipur and quality candidates in the first place? But do you think uh, BJP has uh, been able to bring that difference in the politics or maybe in the political landscape of Manipur? What you're talking about, the clean politics, where people believe in the parties, where people believe in the political system. Has BJP really made a difference in the last five years? What's your honest assessment? I feel that uh, it's a changing, shifting sense of Manipur politics. I mean, Congress was there for the last 15 years. And right. during that time, we saw... 1528 encounters and a lot, lot of other issues, including ban and blockades. But since mm -hmm. 2017, after the BJP took, uh, took over, there has been no freedom of speech in Manipur. People have been arrested left, right, and center just for uh, putting out simple posts on social media. Mm -hmm. And on top, top of that, whatever uh, mandate the election manifesto they had in 2017, the BJP, they have removed all of that in 2022. This, this time, there is no ASPA, no anti-corruption, no drugs, nothing. But back then, they were saying, that we'll remove corruption, we'll do this, we'll be there to uh, uphold the freedom of speech. Now, what happens is people are getting so annoyed also with the BJP government that it's not, not, that's not been fair. They have not promised, kept their promise. Of course, it is very much, I mean, I mean illogical to <clears throat> think that the politicians will keep their word. But nevertheless, when they have a policy, at least they should adhere to at least a bit of it. Now, they are saying that they'll remove APSPA. 
as Bhupen had pointed out, now where is that in the manifesto? Nothing. Now they're saying that we don't need APSMA because it's now what the law and order is fine. So I believe that BJP has not been able to make much of a headway in Manipur either in this term. Right. But as you pointed out, and I'll come to Bupenda on this uh, bit, uh, as Chaubil is saying that uh, there were no uh, economic blockades, there were no encounters, what we really saw during the Congress's regime. Uh, but uh, the way the BJP government is criticized is that they've curbed the freedom of expression. They've... Uh, uh, you know, mounted cases uh, of UAPA against uh, people. So do you think that the Congress's narrative and the way you have building the campaign, is it really correct? Because if you have to resonate amongst the people, then you have to ring the right bells. Is the Congress really ringing the right bells in Manipur right now? Because what you're saying about unemployment, what you're saying about other issues, it's not Manipur specific. You find those problems in, uh, in, in, in every state. Uh, Uttar Pradesh is also going to polls and the same problem exists in Uttar Pradesh as well. So my so, question to you is that is Congress really ticking the right box when it comes to campaign and building the narrative? Well, well, we are, we are rightly resonating with the people's sentiments and the voices, their inner voices, in fact. What we did, we lifted Armed Forces Special Power Act by detaking disturb areas in seven assembly segments in the heart of the state. Hmm. Now, BJP has been in power for the last five years. So what is BJP is saying here is, look, you see at what has happened in Nagaland. Nagaland Assembly passed, Nagaland Cabinet passed to remove, to lift up the Armed Forces Special Power Act from the state, but the central government reimposed it. Then hmm. that is because of this apprehension. It is better that we can reconcile with the center, but that is not the way that how we did. Our then Congress Minister, Bobi Singh, did. We lifted it. We, lit we lifted it up. Now we are saying we did it. We did it partially. That was our commitment. We are going to do it. The moment when Congress Chief Minister comes back, this is what we are saying. There will be no more BJP Chief Minister in Manipur. Once on March 10, after March 10, we will have a Congress Chief Minister in the first cabinet. We are going to have a decision on that. No, but because Bupenda, Bupenda, my question is that supposing if a similar scenario like 2017 emerges this year as well, where uh, you are the single largest party, but you're not able to form the government. Are you prepared for that possibility? A similar thing happened in Goa, similar thing happened in Manipur. Uh, my point is that do you have a plan B? Supposing you are, you become the single largest party, but in your armory, do you have that weapon by which you will form the government? Because BJP will use its money, BJP will use its muscle power, it will use all the tactics to form the government. But do you have that tactics of that plan B? We will have a comfortable majority, but then if you see the statements, you're fully confident that you are going to have a comfortable majority. Are you fully confident? Yeah, we are. We are. We will have a conversation. Okay. But if you okay. see, okay, okay, I, I, I want to bring it. No. One sec, one sec, one sec. Yes. If you read the statement of Assam Chief Minister Hemant Biswa Sharma here, yeah. what did he say? He said we don't need NPP. We don't need NPF Naga People's Front. We don't need Congress Sangma's National People's Party. Then where will they go if they? If, if they have to be a part of the government, they have to come with us. Or whosoever who wants to be a part to, to develop Manipur further inclusively for better Manipur, obviously Congress will sow the lit. And that is why we are saying, because see, our besides our manifesto, see, look, see the contrast. Prime Minister came and spoke about palm oil no, plants. Bupenda, you is, have managed... See, your party was rife with desertions. You had so many people leaving your party. Now you have barely managed. No, no, no. no, no. Let me, let me, let me complete my question. Let me complete my question. My question is that your party has barely managed to form a flimsy alliance of six parties, which includes the left. Now, uh, do you think that people will be confident? People, people still feel that uh, Congress doesn't have numbers and you've just managed to form some no, 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 no. alliance... No, please do not undermine the lay forces here in Manipur. Manipur has been a socialist in society for oh. ages, for decades. We have so many comrades from our left and they are going to vote for us. These are our common okay. candidates. Now, now, with regard to those who wish to defect to other parties, the, yes. cons the, the Supreme Court of India in his landmark judgment in K. Mega Chandra versus Speaker of Manipur, what did they say? Now, it is, apply, it is applicable to all the state legislature of the country as well as the parliament that all, all pending disqualification petitions in the speaker, mm -hmm. whether it is in the Lok Sabha or in the state legislature, must be decided within three months. 
within three months. This came after 2017 because of our Congress MLA is going to Supreme Court. That is why now uh, on March 10, it will be very difficult to defect. Whosoever who wants to get defect, then their matters will have to be decided within three months. Earlier, it took ages and ages because there was no binding in terms of the time outer limit. Now, okay. that was that was already given in the judgment of the Supreme Court. Okay, I just want to take a cue from where you said that you're, you're fully confident that you know Congress will have a comfortable majority. And I want to bring in uh, Paujal here. Uh, uh, can you really counter Congress's claims where it says that they will, they will have a comfortable majority? But uh, I have to take Bupenda's uh, statement with a pinch of salt. Uh, <laughs> what, what, is, what is your assessment? See, there was a recent uh, reaffirmation ceremony where the leader of the Congress, Mr. Okram hmm. Ibobi, along with his Congress entourage, went to all the different holy places, including the Kangla to Masjid to the churches, for what? To swear an alliance, an allegiance with the Congress government that they are not going to run towards the greener pastors, which hmm. would obviously be happening also in this present term, as we assume and as we calculate. So when the Congress are so, I mean, <clears throat> unsteady with their own uh, MLAs that many of them are switching sides and many are also on the pipeline, in the pipeline. Now, what the Congress government is doing is like, they are not sure of themselves also. Of course, there'll be wins, there will be wins, but how much of a win will, will there be? With the Congress but when party. you say when you mm. double, then you say that the Congress is not sure of itself. What mm. is it? Uh, what is it really that it's unsure of? It's not. Un, it's not sure of the numbers. It's not sure of its MLA sticking to their party. What is it that you? What is that unsurety angle you're trying to project as? It is the MLAs, the credibility of the the ethical stance. Okay. One okay. one point one point is that, mm -hmm. but. As I have said, we, we don't have quality politicians in Manipur. And you may say that BJP and Congress are both sides of the same coin because it is now the same minister is the former Congress MLA minister who was with the Congress for 15 years. Right. Now it is our Congress uh, uh, shift with the president who shifted to uh, BJP. Likewise, mm. it's just like putting that old wine in the new bottle scenario. New bottle, yes. Mm -mm, the new bottle. So <clears throat> that is the scenario over here in Manipur. It's like we do not have that good politicians who are going by the party standards, who just stick to the party stand until we die. But just when there's a rift or something happens, people just switch over to the other side. That is the so main thing. So what is the popular sentiment? Do the people of Manipur realize that uh, if there is a particular government which is at the center the people will have to vote for that particular party. Do, by and large, uh, the Manipuris feel like this? I believe that uh, Manipur's po uh, political way of choosing our candidates does not necessarily go on the uh, political parties, but rather also on the individual who's contesting. Okay. Okay. So the situation is a little bit different, but it also depends on the hills and also on the valleys. So we have got 40 seats in the valley, 20 in the hills. So the circumstances are a little bit different in the hills and the valleys compared as compared. But when I speak of the valley, people are also inclined with the party. Of course, there'll be Congress loyalists, there'll be BJP loyalists, there'll be some NPP loyalists, NPF people over there in the hills. Now, mm. but individuals by and large stick to the candidates irrespective of the uh, party. But the majority of the some of the uh, constituencies will obviously want to go with the winning side, with the ones who, who's in power at the center, who will be like getting much more money from the center and there'll be some de development because Manipur as itself, we don't want to be in the opposition side, but we want to want to be with the ruling thing. That is the basic mind frame that some people, the electorate have here in but Manipur. Pautil, if I may ask you that what are the real issues which are the overriding factors in this election of 2022? when it's very specific to Manipur. Uh, what are the people really looking for? Uh, unemployment is, is, is a problem which exists in all the states. But if I may ask you, what are those overriding factors which are going to really govern the mind of the electorate in this election? What are those factors? The main thing is, as I said before, it's money. Money, money and muscle power. We have seen a lot of 
escalation are in you trying to say that whichever party throws money at the people people are going to vote for that particular party it plays one big uh, chunk of that money plays a major denominator and a muscle power hmm. as i as i have said we are politicians who are bribing uh, who are buying the electorate basically in a way so the ones who have got deep pockets they, it matters for example we have one person from the npp or some other part of party who has got very deep pockets or for example the richest man in manipur so he's been spending lots of money with the with his assembly constituency for last so many years and the crores are pumped in and he's right. got everything on his side so there's one person who doesn't have money but who has got that particular ethics who will be a good politician who will make good policies but that no, but person if, is if big. money if money is the driving factor then who seems to have a clearer edge congress or bjp now that's a so very it's a very question. juvenile question i know no, no, but no, 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 no that's but a very good question what, no, no, it's a right. very good question now yes. let me come to that so when the congress came to power they earned a hell lot of money the mls and ministers over there now when the bjp came here they looted the public also and the crores have gone up Congress looted in hundreds, BJP looted in thousands. I mean, that's the, the, the inflation of Manipur in a way. So the minister got richer, and the, the Congress, when they looted the public, they were rich also. Now they are still got that money with them. Now the hmm. BJP is the one who got five years to loot the public money. They have got deep pockets now, but there are other factors which are like from anyway other parties who have got uh, some money with them. They are ex former bureaucrats or who have. Done the same thing. They are drug uh, lords who are in the uh, fray. So these are the things that also matters. Like you have got uh, some organization at your back, clubs mm. or people who are uh, armed. I mean, armed organizations like in the hills. There has been a lot of complaints about uh, rebel okay. groups getting into the fray mm. by those. Uh, I mean, supporting one political party as party or an individual. so there are different dynamics in our manipur politics but money as i'm saying and it comes with that comes obviously power so these are the two main factors and the violence that is uh, going up now th- this combined makes a very uh, disastrous recipe in our manipur Indeed. Indeed. politics it looks like a lethal cocktail almost and which is very unfortunate for the democracy but my question to you bupendra now is that uh, according to what paujal is saying and i'm going purely by what he's saying that congress is no different from what bjp has been or what bjp tries to project i mean only the scales have differed if you were in hundreds bjp is in thousands so what is the kind of difference you are promising to the people and uh, why would manipuris really uh, get convinced of what congress is saying they would rather go with the center which is bjp ruled see uh, when there was a protest against citizenship amendment bill in new delhi right what did bjp government do in the center they sent a cbi raid at the residence of our former chief minister because he was speaking against cab then so you see the timing when we were about to form the government in the legislature manipur legislative assembly for no confidence motion we, there was a voice vote there should have been a voice di- on division the voting should have been done on division but instead of that it was a voice vote so see this is a contrast what has bjp done in the five years they have built a palatial beautiful gorgeous bjp central office in imphal but they should have also completed our new secretariat complex in the heart of the city adjoining our manipur high court which they have failed to do it what is bjp trying to do we have the only i mean there is only one airport in imphal imphal international airport or which is also now called as bir tikendrajit tikendrajit international airport now the government the bjp regime what they are trying to do they are trying to privatize it they are trying to sell it off so wherever bjp comes back, comes to power they sell the properties our public assets our public properties the same thing is also happening in manipur that is why now see you are t- see see the contrast between the bjp and congress let's talk about the local democracy in the hills and in our valley we have urban local bodies we have municipal corporations we have municipality elections we also have an autonomous district council elections in the hills that democratizes the hills the common people of our hills our brothers and sisters in the hills have been given power to exercise their rights for the local administration in the hills but what has the bjp government done the bjp government has not even conducted and adc elections 
in the hills, despite even after the completion of the tenure, the full tenure of the ADC. That's the difference. So what we are saying, once Congress comes back to power, when we will have the Congress chief minister, we but will if you are so down, confident, start... Bupinda, Bupinda, when you are so confident that Congress is coming back to power, who's really going to be your leader? Your leader is uh, is 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 old, though he's very very experienced, but. Uh, as the BJP tries to project, but you know that the Congress has a very old leader. He doesn't have the energy to drive, uh, you know, that kind of sentiment uh, in Manipur. Uh, you have no other leader than uh, Okrami Bobi Singh. No, who no, else no, is no, there? No. Do you have any young leader who can be projected as who a chief minister? Or your leader? party is really going to bank on Okrami Bobi, Bobi Singh and nobody else? We have no dirt of leaders. But the point yeah. is Okram. No, but who else? Who else apart from Okram? Who else apart from Okram? Who else apart from Okram? Okram Ibobi Singh is also one of the tallest leaders on the Congress party in the entire country. So that's the point. Now look, see, what once on March 10, we will have our MLAs, Congress MLAs, we will have the Congress Legislative Party meeting where our Congress Legislative Party leader will be elected by the members of CLP. And then we will decide the next minister. But yes, what? who is Ibobi? Ibobi, to my language, I should term him as the modern architect of a developing Manipur. What we are have, what we're having right now in Manipur is the result of our Ibobi Singh-led Congress government in the last 15 years. We are having peace now. BJP is claiming that they have brought peace. No, no but all those gains were lost in 2017. You're, you are counting on the gains which you had for 15 years, but you lost those gains in 2017. But whatever you are saying is with respect no, 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 no. to the fact that you have comfortable numbers on 10th March. Uh, one, Chauvel, I have to wind one up the show. Second, one second, one second, yes. one second. In 2002, yes. there was Atal Bihari Baspai as the Prime Minister. We came to power 2002. Congress Chief Minister was there in 2002. And that is why in 2004, UPA government came back. Now in 2022, we will have a Congress CM, and in 2024, we will we will know we will no more have Prime Minister Modi as the Prime Minister. Okay, that okay, okay, okay. So the, you're sounding like a soothsayer right now, but uh, but <laughs> but the results will be known on 10th March. Chauvel, I want to conclude with your comment. Uh, BJP with BJP, a lot of people are saying that you know they are a lot of revulsions and. Uh, uh, you know, uh, churnings within the BJP about whether the fact N. Biren Singh becomes the chief minister again. How is BJP placed? Do you see any kind of factionalism as far as BJP is placed in Manipur? Very much, very much. Because that fight has always been there within the BJP. Because right. since 2017, there was a fight on who would be the chief minister. Because the Biren, Biren had just switched sides from the Congress, came mm -hmm. to the BJP, and he got the chief minister. But the next in command, Mr. Bishujit, is also vying for that particular post of the minister. Now, this time also, the BJP itself is with uh, internally a little bit uh, polarized in the sense that once who is going to be the chief minister candidate for the BJP? The, so you, 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 you mean to say that because of its own internal politics, the going is not going to be very easy for BJP in Manipur? No. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's going to be very and, uh, tough. Mm -hmm. But but you have said two different things, uh, which again mm -hmm. prompts me to ask you another question. You said it's, that the going is not very easy for BJP because of its internal politics and mm -hmm. because of the money power, because of the way the MLAs are bribing the people, you say the BJP has an edge. So what am I to understand? Is BJP winning this Manipur election or Congress is going to sweep this time? What is your assessment? And with that, I'm going to close the program. In 2017, the Congress had the numbers, they couldn't do it, they can't. Right. BJP is coming back, it'll be a hung assembly this time. It'll be a coalition government. That's oh it. Oh my God. Mm, that's the that's okay. thing. Mm. Okay, so Manipur can be a hung assembly, says uh, Paujal Chauba, who's the executive editor of the Frontier Manipur. Uh, Bupenda, you want to say something before I wind up the show? He's saying he's predicted a hung assembly for Manipur. What are you going to do? Well, I don't believe in prediction, but certainly the people of Manipur are fed up. You with predicted. This. Just a short while back, you made predictions no, I'm, and predictions. I'm saying the people of Manipur are already fed up with this double engine, which is indeed has become a trouble engine today. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. So you say that the double engine has become a trouble engine for BJP. Well, the results will be out on 10th March. Uh, thank you so much, uh, both of you, uh, Bupenda and Paujel. And we hope to see you again on 10th March with a lot of discussions. And then we'll find out whom the electorate has really voted for. Give us feedback on how you like the discussion. 
and stay tuned for another episode of Point of View. Thank you so much. Thank you, gentlemen.